In this lesson, our goal is to learn how to find the last term, and ultimately this will allow us to complete the square. We're trying to find the last term of a perfect square trinomial, and so if we take a look at what the definition is of a perfect square trinomial, we know that to be x squared plus 2 times b times x, and then plus b squared. In this format, the factors of this trinomial will always be x plus b squared, or x plus b times x plus b. So if we take a look at then this question, which asks us, is x squared plus 8x plus 16 really a perfect square trinomial? We know that it is in fact a perfect square trinomial because each of these components match up. I have x squared, which is clearly identical. Now 16, we want to ask ourselves, is that a perfect square? It is. And it is a perfect square because we can write it as 4 squared. So notice then if I rewrite it as 4 squared, my b value becomes 4. So I already have x squared. I already have my last term, which is a perfect square written as 4 squared. So the question then is, can I write this middle term as 2 times 4 times x? And obviously 2 times 4 times x, it is 8x. So this checks. So the three major components that I'm looking for when I'm talking about a perfect square trinomial is, is my first term written as a perfect square, is my last term written as a perfect square, and then is my middle term written as two times the square root of my first and the square root of my last terms. So obviously this is a perfect example. The answer is yes indeed, this is a perfect square trinomial. We're going to apply that then to this question, which can we find the third or the last term in each question? So every time we'll be presented with a problem, it'll just read this. Can we find the last term given x squared plus 8x? So notice I've put plus a blank for you. So to figure this out, we want to apply that general pattern. And we notice that every time our middle term always turns out to be 2 times b, times x. So I want to figure out, well, what is my b value? And if 2bx is my middle term, then it has to equal 8x. Well, naturally, there's x's on both sides, so I really just want to figure out for what value of b does 2b equal 8. And of course, this is when b is 4. Well, my general format was x squared plus double my b value times x, which we just solved for and found that b is 4. And then plus, if you remember, my last term was always b squared. So here to find my last term, I don't want to put just 4 there. I want to put 4 squared, which is 16. This then allows us to factor this. Our factors, recall, were always x plus b squared. So here my factor is going to be x plus my b value, which is 4 squared. If I take a look at example number 2, then instead of going through saying, well, 2 times b times x has to equal 12x, instead of doing that, we notice that every time our b value ends up being half of the coefficient of x. If we take a look at example 1, we were given 8x and b was 4, and notice 4 is half of 8. So in example 2, instead of showing all that work, I'm simply going to say my b value is going to be equal to half whatever my middle term is. So half of 12 is 6. And if you can do that mentally, of course, you don't have to write out half of 12. You can just say, well, b is 6. And if b is 6, I know what goes in this last term. My last term is b squared, or 36. If I go to factor that then, remember, it's not x plus my last term, but it's x plus my b value. My b value is 6, so it's x plus 6 squared. The last example I chose is because it doesn't always turn out to be a perfect integer is our b value. So we want half of 5. Half of 5 is going to give me 5 halves. And I want to take 5 halves and square it. Now I'm going to write that out. 5 halves squared, remember from our exponent properties, is the same as 5 squared 
over 2 squared, so that's going to give us 25 over 4. When I go to factor this, again, we want to make sure we don't use just our b squared or our last term. We want to use only our b value. So our b value was at 5 halves, or again, just half of our middle term. So in every single problem, what we did here was first we found the last term, and by finding the last term, what we've done is we've completed the square. So in example number one, x squared plus 8x plus 16, by adding in the 16, we've completed the square. And in doing so, we were able to factor that trinomial and write it as some quantity squared, a binomial squared. This will allow us to solve quadratics in a much more concise and simple manner. So in summary, we want a general rule for finding that last term. And that general rule is going to say if the leading coefficient is 1, and that's really important, we've only talked about if the leading coefficient is 1, I'm going to take half the coefficient of x and I'm going to square it. So in this example, what I want to do is I'm going to say my general format will be x squared plus some number x, and I want to find this last term. And that last term is always going to be some number divided by 2 and then squared. Whatever I get there is going to be my last term. So every time I want to take the middle term, so long as it's a coefficient of x, take half of it and square that result, that will allow me to complete the square.